perhaps the most famous tank action in history was when the legendary tank commander Michael Whitman destroyed an entire column of 25 tanks, 14 half-tracks, and 14 Bren gun carriers with a single tank in a matter of minutes. That tank was none other than the Panzerkampfwagen 6, better known as the Tiger I. This is Combat Tech, and in this episode, we will see what happens when Shermans are put in a Tiger's cage. The Tiger I is one of the most respected tanks of history. This German heavy tank saw service on the Eastern Front, Western Front, and in North Africa during World War II. It was designed to make breakthroughs on the battlefield by destroying enemy tanks at long range while absorbing hits from anti-tank guns. The final version of the Tiger I weighed 54 tons and had a crew of five. The 88mm KWK 36L56 main gun was the most powerful anti-tank gun in use by any army, capable of penetrating 112 millimeters of armor at 4,600 feet. The tank's rolled homogeneous nickel steel plate had the best homogeneous armor hardness level of any World War II tank. Allied crews often felt helpless as their shots bounced off the Tiger, while their vehicles were quickly destroyed, often from great distances. The Tiger I was also very maneuverable for its weight and size. It had the essential foundation of the German idea of a heavy tank contained in its concept. This dictated an uncompromising focus on design quality combining lethality with the best protection conceivable. This ideology was underpinned by excellent engineering and training, which subsequently found expression in small tactical unit actions as Tigers either hunted in pairs or alone. Tank construction has always been a labor-intensive and expensive process. Building Tigers, on the other hand, was an entirely different story. The Tiger was not a mass-produced tank. Rather, it was a boutique tank, produced in small batches in smaller factories with limited output. It was very expensive to build. Only some 1,300 were made. It was man-hour intensive to make and man-hour intensive to operate. Because it was such a maintenance nightmare, a special manual called Tiger Feeble was written to keep the soldiers interested in the tank's tight maintenance schedule. Still, it experienced many problems in the field. The M4 Sherman, however, was a product of a different doctrine. Named after the famous American Civil War General William T. Sherman, this tank is one of the iconic fighting vehicles of the Allies during World War II and one of the most famous tanks in history. It became the workhorse of the U.S. Army, providing close infantry support, spearheading armored attacks, it was not meant to engage enemy tanks head-on, but the Sherman usually worked on platoons of five tanks, and a Sherman platoon was not a foe anyone would take lightly. More than 50,000 Shermans were produced between 1942 and 1945, almost like 40 Shermans per every Tiger I built. We know that quantity often has its own quality, but in this case, things were different. The Sherman was a remarkable tank and was used in all combat theaters. This tank was known for its reliability in all armies of the world. Soviets loved the M4 because it had a reliable transmission. Germans admired its reliable engine. British liked its fast and reliable turret traverse. When the British Army used the M4 tank in the Second Battle of El Alamein in North Africa in late 1942, it increased the advantage of Allied armor over Axis armor and outperformed the lighter German and Italian tank designs. For this reason, the U.S. Army believed that the M4 would be adequate to win the war. However, Tiger I was a different beast. The initial Sherman 75mm main gun lacked sufficient armor-piercing ability, and its armor couldn't withstand the punishment of an 88mm. On one-versus-one combat, a Sherman 
was no match for a Tiger I. The Shermans had to rely on their superior numbers and speed. During the German attacks on the Americans in Tunisia, the Shermans went up against Tigers repeatedly. The German tanks used the superior range of their guns to decimate the M4s at long range in a few engagements. So this round goes to Tiger I. But as the war progressed, so did the M4 Sherman. By 1944, both the United States and Britain had installed 76.2 mm guns atop their Sherman tanks. The best part is that these tanks weren't dragging about 30 tons of useless armor, as at this time, the Tiger I's armor wouldn't protect it. These 76.2 mm guns could destroy a Tiger I from the front at a respectable range. The Tiger's armor had turned into a speed deterrent. Tiger I could still easily blow up a Sherman, but now the Sherman was also capable of doing so. Also manufacturing an M4A2 76.2mm was far simpler than manufacturing a Tiger I. This round goes to the Shermans. So our verdict? We call this one a draw. Let us know what you think in the comments.